All right, so can Google detect phrase.io AI generated content? So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. We're gonna go through the process of creating AI generated content with phrase and then using a tool originality.ai to, to have a look to see if we can identify it. Um, so what is phrase? It's a tool that was originally created as a um, content brief creation aid. Um, great tool, I've used it for, for I think a couple of years now almost. Um, and, and it's fantastic for creating uh, briefs really efficiently that looks at what's already ranking in Google and then cr shows you what content sh you should be targeting um, to, also, to also rank. And then it's recently gotten on the train in the last year of uh, like other tools of uh, GPT-3 using the uh, API there to be able to become a full, fully functioning um, content creation tool. Um, and then, you know, what, what are we going to be using to, to determine if we think Google can detect phrase that IO generated content? And that's going to be originality.ai, which is a tool that myself and the team built um, that looks at um, all the popular natural language processing um, APIs like GPT-3, GPT-2, Neo, GPT-J, um, and then identifying um, based on that if we predict that content was generated um, by, um, by a bot. Um, before Originality AI, we built and sold a content marketing agency that was the heaviest user of Jasper in the world. Um, we were crushing a lot of a lot of content when then applying a human editor to it. Um, so definitely very familiar with sort of the world of AI content creation. Um, but why do we care? Why do we care if we are able to determine if content was generated by AI or not? Um, certainly Google has been uh, rattling a lot, like has been getting very scared with the amount of AI content that has been proliferating around the web. And, you know, ultimately they're in the business of trying to make money. And if the usefulness of the content that is published on the web declines, people will find their information from another source. Um, and I think that's what's got them concerned. Um, so we're, uh, you know, I think they, have, they said, they said some scary words around like AI content is bad. You know, some people are on that train and that sort of believe everything that Google says. Um, I think they've also left the door open that um, they're saying that as long as, don't care where it starts from, but it cannot be spam content as long as it's useful content. Um, and certainly AI content is working. Uh, we're seeing it across um, a lot of a lot of sites. Uh, here's one site in the portfolio, our portfolio that uh, we started pushing a lot of AI generated content with a human editor. And uh, here's here's how it's performing. Um, so we're gonna look at trying to answer the question of can Google detect phrase that IO generated content? And so we're going to take, um, similar to the other ser videos in the series, where we're looking at other tools and can they determine if there's AI-generated content, we're going to look at um, taking that this keyword, getting a piece of content created around it, and then using the tool at originality.ai to determine if, um, if it was generated by um, AI. So, um, you know, Phrase has slightly fewer options um, on their AI tool. So we're gonna accommodate that a little bit. Um, so try and frame everything as a, as a how-to question versus a, and, and that way it should hopefully produce the sort of results. Uh, you know, when, when using these tools, it's always best to sort of use them the way that they have been designed to be used. Um, so. Um, all right, here is uh, 134 word output um, that we're gonna grab, uh, fire it into originality.ai and scan now. So what originality.ai is, is this plagiarism checker built in 2022 with some sort of increased functionality that web publishers care about, like the ability to add team members, dashboard to see scan history, um, auto renewal on credits, um, and then it's also a plagiarism checker to determine if uh, content that has been produced is predicted to be, have been generated by an AI tool. So in this case, this piece of content that was uh, produced by Phrase um, passed plagiarism, but had a 100% um, AI detection score. So 
we're gonna I'm gonna kind of save all of these pieces of content that get produced and then create a, an example article so that you're gonna be able to to have a look um, so how this phrase works we use that um, so we're gonna try and stick with the how to's on on this just so that we're uh, I'm gonna we'll create some uh, other. Oh, it's a how does, not a how to. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll look. I want. I'm trying to keep all the questions consistent um, for this sort of case study, but I also don't want to force the tool to use to produce a type of content that it doesn't typically like producing. Um, so this how does might not have been perfect. No, oh, actually looks. Looks, uh, I mean, this is for the, for the tools that can sort of string together three logical subheadings. Um, gets a little bit. Yeah, it looks actually like they did a, it's a reasonable, I haven't read the words, but I mean, GPT-3 generally produces really well written words where it's a challenge is to have an article that gets structured, structured logically. Um, and then, and then being factual is the other sort of check that's always, um, needed. Um, that was, Just trying to do this both live so that you can see see it happening um, in the articles that phrase can produce. And then also run the scan. So it did find a little bit of uh, plagiarism and then it did flag it as 100% um, AI generated. And then I'll just grab one more here. Um, Too, right, which is a bit of a duplicate, but we'll we'll use this. And I think that's just the three that we're going to run on, on for for phrase. So excuse my uh, editing here while while this is happening. Uh, Okay, looks like it kind of strung to, again strung together a, a reasonable, reasonably logical section, um, but not not as in depth as some other some other tools. So it's interesting that sort of in some cases it produces a pretty short piece of content. In other cases, it's produced a fairly significant size piece of content. So yeah, on uh, on the scans here, uh, we look at the three last scans. We have 100 word, 500 word, 200 word. All of them got tagged with uh, with 100% confidence in plagiarism, as sort of all of the recent ones have. Um, that that we've been running with with through these through these tools. So, um, you know, phrase. I think if we're capable of producing uh, an AI that can this accurately predict if content has been produced by by one of these GPT three tools, then I think it's pretty safe to say that Google has that capability as well. Um, so, you know, what you do with that information, um, that's. That's not as clean an answer. Um, you know, is AI, is, I, you know, I'm not suggesting that AI is bad. I'm still using it on sites um, with human editor involved and, and these extra steps. Um, but, you know, I think if you're, if I'm asking someone to write a piece of content and paying them, um, I, I would like them to not have used AI and not have that risk. So I think that's how a lot of people are looking to use originality.ai along with just the improved um, plagiarism team 
uh, or plagiarism uh, team management and, and that uh, addition, those additional features. But uh, yeah, I think uh, you know pretty clear that in the case of phrase, Google is capable of detecting phrase.io AI generated content. All right, that's it for this video. Um, if you want to check out some other popular tools and whether or not we think Google can identify them, then uh, yeah, continue along in this uh, series.